Now, in the March edition of Registered Gas Installer, or Gas Safes Magazine, there is an article on the changes made to Gas Safes Technical Bulletin 118. Technical Bulletin 118 is the electrical safety for gas engineers. So, let's get on with it and dive into this magazine and see exactly what changes they have made to Technical Bulletin 118. Now, this technical bulletin, which came out on the 1st of February 2023, replaces the old version, which came out on the 30th of January 2018. Now, 118A relates to the safe to touch and the electrical safe isolation of gas appliances up to a thousand volts, single phase. And there's going to be another version of Technical Bulletin 118, so I guess it'll be 118B, uh, released soon, which will relate to multi-phase and earth loop impedance testing. Now, this Technical Bulletin 118 has been produced so that all uh, gas registered businesses, whether you're a sole trader or whether you're an engineer working for a business, you must comply with. Now, remember, it's the current, the amps that kills us, not the volts. So this is very, very important that we follow this procedure. Now, this procedure has been laid out now with 12 steps. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through the full 12 steps to make sure we're compliant. But first of all, let's have a look at the actual equipment you're going to need or you should already have to comply with this technical bulletin 118A. Now, first of all, all this test equipment must comply to BSEM 61010-31 or BSEN 61572 or BSEN 61243-3. Now the first thing we're going to be looking at is this non-contact voltage indicator or non-contact voltage detector. So first thing we need to look on here to see whether it complies to the standards and this complies to BSEN 61010 and its range is between 12 volts to 1000 volts. Now for gas engineers we need these to go lower than 50 volts because even lower than 50 volts, we could still create a spark and create an explosion, even though it might technically not give us an electric shock. So that's the first thing we need to do. Does it comply? Yes, it does. Now, as well as your non-contact voltage indicator, you're gonna need a proving unit because the proving unit is gonna to have to be able to prove that your tool pole tester is working correctly. So we're gonna need that proving unit and you're going to need a two pole tester. Now you're also going to need some kind of device that tells us whether our live neutral and earth are wired correctly. Now this one, this socket and C, also does earth loop impedance testing. So that might come in handy for part B and it also does our polarity and it also checks our CDs as well. So this is a good unit for us as gas engineers to carry because remember, we're not electricians. Bear that in mind as we're going through these tests. Now, things we don't need are this thing. So this thing does check, it's a cheap thing from being q and it does check that your live neutral and earth is wired supposed to be, but it doesn't check whether your earth and your neutral are wired the wrong way around. So we can't use that one. And also they say we can't use these because they're not auto finding for the voltage. We have to set the voltage first. So technically we can't use a multimeter they reckon we're not intelligent enough to use them. How insulting is that? Anyway, another thing is this little device here where you could actually use this to test whether your live neutral on earth is in the right place. But again, we're not electricians, so we're not using that. 
You will also need a lockout or lock off kit for electrical consumer units which have MCBs or RCDs in them and also your fuse spur or your isolator switches. Now I'm going to do a full video on this later but you're going to need a lock off or lock out kit. So these are the major components we need. The two pole tester, a decent well, this is a socket and see to tell us whether we've got live, neutral and earth wired correctly and our polarity and our earth loop impedance. Our proving unit to prove this and you can also buy a proving unit to prove this as well. But if you've got a known supply, which this is going to prove your known supply, then this is okay to be used that way. Other than going out and buying a proving unit for that and that. Anyway, that's the equ equipment we're going to need. Let's have a look at these 12 steps that this technical bulletin 118A has laid out for us to follow. Now, step number one. First thing we need to do is explain to the customer or the responsible person that we need to isolate the electrical supply and is it okay to isolate this electrical supply? Because there could be some equipment connected to that electrical supply that could be keeping somebody alive or fridges or something like that. So it might not be possible to turn something off there and then. So always check that you're allowed to do so. So that's number one. Check with the responsible person that you can isolate the supply. Now, step number two is we need to do our safe to touch test. But first of all, we need to prove that our non-contact voltage indicator or detector is working correctly. Now, this is where the socket and C comes in because we haven't got a proving unit for this because it says you can either use a proving unit or a known supply. Now, first of all, I'm going to check this plug socket here to make sure it's wired correctly by the using my socket and C. So all I've got to do is plug it in. Now when I turn it on, we should get three green lights here to tell us that the live, neutral and earth are correct. If we've got red lights, then it's showing that there's something incorrect. And it's also going to do our earth loop impedance testing. Now remember, earth loop impedance isn't in this one. It's going to be in part B. So let's turn it on. So we've got our three green lights and we should have a green light there to tell us we've got an earth, which we have. So that first part is good. Now let's have a look at step number three. Now what we need to do is turn on the non-contact voltage indicator and can you see there's a little light there. This light is basically telling you the batteries are good. So what I'm going to do is put it onto the live connection here and what it should do is light up and it should be red lights here. So let's turn the socket on first. And you can see it's giving us red flashing lights and high fast beeping. So that's telling us it's working. So what I can do now is if we were working on this boiler, I can sweep around the boiler. Remember it's non-contact, so we don't actually have to touch it, but I'm gonna sweep around it, round the side, across the pipework at the bottom, And around the gas meter. Now, technically, is this passed? Well, it's not beat, but I still need to prove it. So I've got to prove it again. So that's now telling me it should be safe to touch. Now, if this fails, this test fails, because we're not electricians, we can't go any further. So failing means if I go onto here and it does the high pitch beeping, then we've failed. Now we can't go any further and you must tell the customer that it's not safe to continue and they must get a qualified electrician out to check out what the fault is. Now I've had this on a couple of boilers, the last one, was a screw had been screwed through the bracket and the wires run down the wall where the bracket was and it just touched the live wire. So when we came to do the testing, this lit up like a Christmas tree. 
And that's what we found out had happened. The screw had gone through the live wire of the wire running down the back. So you never know when this is going to save your life. So that's why this is important. So test number two, use your non-contact voltage indicator or detector to prove that the appliances you're working on are not live. So when you touch them, you don't get electrocuted. Now, step number four, identify the point of isolation for the appliance you're working on. So for this boiler here, it would be this plug top. And for this uh, unvented cylinder, it's actually a few spur here. Now remember, this is a training centre, so no messages in the comments below going, your socket's too near the sink. Anyway, step number four, identify the point of isolation. Now, step number five, select an appropriate voltage indicator. So in this case, it's a two-pole tester. First thing we need to do is a visual inspection of the equipment to make sure nothing is broken, that the tips are still on there and there's no breaks in the cable. Now, these are automatic, so when I touch them together, you can hear the buzzing and you can see the lights working. So I've just now tested the batteries working. Now, that brings us quite nicely into test number six. Now, this is where the proving unit comes in. So what I'm going to do now is put the red pole onto the red and the black pole onto the black and test whether this is working or not. So black first, then the red, press down, and you can see this is working. So, this is working and we can now use this to carry out our safe isolation. Now, steps number seven and number eight. Number seven is identify how you're going to isolate it and number eight is actually isolate it. So for this boiler you can see it's on a plug top in a socket. Now yes, the socket is uh, switched, so it shouldn't be. So we're going to have to remove the plug now, if this plug was not in the location of the boiler, not right in front of you, then you will need to remove the fuse. So that would be the isolation for this one. For this water heater, it will be remove this fuse here. Or you might want to isolate it at the MCB or the RCD at the consumer unit. So that's identifying how you're going to isolate them and actually isolating them. And number nine, now you've actually isolated the appliance, use the appropriate locking off devices so nobody can accidentally turn it on. So padlocks through the few spurs and the locking off devices for MCBs and RCDs. Now number 10 is actually carry out the safe isolation procedure or the dead test. Now, this doesn't matter whether it's on a plug top or whether it's on a few spur, it's the same procedure for carrying out the safe isolation test. So let's carry it out then. Now, what also we can do with this, even though gas safe day, this isn't a proved thing, we can see if we've got an earth at the main earth terminal on the boiler so if I plug that into the earth and then that, on, that onto the earth terminal on the boiler, we should get earth continuity. So let's see if we've got that. So if I plug that into my earth terminal and then this onto the main earth terminal of the boiler, we should get a bleeping and we should get earth continuity. Which we are doing. So that means the earth in this boiler is correct and it's working. And we can even test that we've got the earth between the socket and the pipework. So we can see we've got continuity, earth continuity on all the pipes. Now we're going to be testing this boiler for safe isolation. I've got the power supply turned off. Now First test I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's dead. 
So the plug is unplugged. So it should be dead. Now the reason why we've got to do this is because we've got separate controls on this boiler and somebody could have wired the controls in wrong. So we could be getting back feed through our controls. We could also have, if it's a Y plan or an S plan, um, somebody could have put another supply in somewhere. Um, so we could be getting back feeding down a switch live. So I've unplugged it and I'm going to test now and see whether it's dead. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this black lead onto my earth and then I'm going to put this onto my live and I should have no voltage. And I've got nothing. Now I'm going to put it between my earth and neutral and there should still be nothing there, which there isn't. And then I'm now going to put the black lead onto the blue neutral wire and this onto the live wire, okay, the brown wire, and I've got nothing. So I can assume this boiler is dead. Now what I'm also going to do is, I'm going to put this onto my earth, and I'm now going to test all the other wires, and see if I've got any voltage coming back through the wires, and there isn't. But I do know all this side of the board on an Ariston boiler is low voltage anyway. But I've got nothing coming back. So I can assume it's safe, but I've got to prove that this is still working. Now, step 11. So after we've carried out our safe isolation procedure, we need to prove that our two pole tester is still working. Now, what we've got to do is use exactly the same equipment we used to prove them in the first place. So if you've used a known supply, you have to use that known supply. We use the proven loop unit. So again, I'm going to put the black onto the black, the red onto the red, and you can see the buzz is on and the lights are on. So we've proved it's still working. So we know we've carried out the safe isolation procedure and the equipment is still working, so it should be safe for us to touch it. And finally, step number 12. We've isolated everything now and it should be safe to work on it. But always remain vigilant. Never leave an appliance. And if you do leave an appliance, then recheck it to make sure nobody's reconnected it. It's really, really important that while we're working on the appliances, we don't just wander off. We actually stay in front of it. We do what we've got to do. And if we do have to move, we keep checking and making sure that not just that the appliance is isolated, that we are safe and we are going to go home at the end of the day. And then obviously after you've completed everything, you need to reinstate the appliance. So you'll need to remove any of the lock off devices, whether it's on your fuse spur, whether it's on the RCD, MCBs, you'll need to remove all them reinstate the appliance and then check the appliance for safe operation following the checks in regulation 26.9 of the gas safety installation and use regulations. Now that's the full isolation procedure laid out by technical bulletin 118A. Now if you don't have the magazine you can download the technical bulletin 118A free from the gas safe website. But once you've completed all the tests, if you find any faults, remember we are gas engineers, not electricians. So we need to leave the customer paperwork to tell them to get the fault checked and rectified by a qualified electrician and then get back in touch with us then to come out and do whatever we were supposed to be doing in the first place. That's really important. Always complete your paperwork because otherwise if you don't give them paperwork, you're just going to completely ignore what you've just said. Anyway, hope you've liked the video, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.